Hi there everybody, my name is Dr. Anthony Cliff and in this very quick tutorial I'm going to show you the very basics of NVivo, just how to get a transcript into NVivo and how to do your coding and then how to generate your themes. NVivo can do lots of different things but for the majority, 99% of students um, and researchers is all we need is the ability to retrieve those codes and those themes for our write-up and that's what I'm going to show you today in NVivo 14. It's a lot simpler than the old NVivo 11 and NVivo 12. So we need to go into NVivo and obviously we need to set up a new project. So we need to click new project and then it pops up here with the project title. You can um, save that wherever you want to. And if you had multiple different projects on the go, you would like to give it a description, please do. Uh, and just go down here to text content language. And if you're in the UK or the US, make sure you put the correct English. And if you're using different languages, then go ahead and pick your most appropriate one and then click next. Yeah, it'll prompt you uh, what different types of settings do you want? Do you want it to auto save? Um, do you want it to come up every 15 minutes? That's kind of the default that I would use, but it's totally up to you. Uh, and again, here's your recovery files. You can set all of that up. And once you've done that, just click create project. It was the very first time you've used NVivo. It will pop up here with a little bit of a tour. Feel free to use that. But if you want to just head straight in, just click skip the tour. So now, first and foremost, what we want to do is we want to insert our transcript into NVivo so that we can work on that to generate our coding structures. So what you want to do is you want to navigate to import and click on that. And then you want to go to files. Now, even if you had a survey, if you're working on a survey, for example, yes, you can import that, but it is easier just to use um, the files button here. And then I want you to then navigate to where that is saved in your computer and then go ahead and click on that. So once you've done that, it'll ask you um, a couple of things. You can just go ahead and import it. If you had, for example, if you're looking at cases later on, so if gender, age, etc., was important in part of your analysis, you go ahead and click on that and set that up. But for the purposes today, we're just going to be looking at the transcript as is, so we're going to click import. And now here that comes with the original one that we was saved as. So I'm going to leave that as is, but if you had it as a participant's name, you would type that in there, participant one, participant two. And again, you'd like to give it a description. So you know exactly what that transcript is about. Type that in and then click OK. Okay, and now we're currently in our file. So you'll see here we have our file. There are currently no codes or references and it was added on this date. And if we double click just to check it's the right one, that will open it up. We'll see here, I have my transcript uh, here of a podcast and um, that needs to be coded. So it's all there, it's all ready to go. So what we need to do is we need to go over to the left hand side here and we want to click on codes. Okay, so now we have this section here that says drag selection here to code to encode. So if, for example, you are doing inductive coding, so this is where you are reading the transcript and you are generating the codes as they appear, then that's really, really easy to do. So for example, here, this was about a ward. So if we highlight this one here and we might say, okay, I want to code every time the mention of an award appears. So that's going to be my new code. That's inductive coding. So we simply highlight the quote that we want to code and we just drag it across into this box here. And then NVivo gives us a prompt. What do you want to call that? So I'm going to just put here and then mention of award. And again, I might give that a description. So I, if I come back to this later on, so here, Anytime a participant mentions the award, I'm going to code that. So I click OK. Now it tells me it's currently one file, because obviously I'm only working in what document currently, and it's appeared one time. And that's what our references mean. If, for example, we had another transcript and we found the award, then that would say two files and two references. Um, OK. So again, here uh, we won the Student Experience Awards, and this is about the name of it. So again, I can highlight that drop it in and that's added in line. Some people, however, might be doing deductive coding. So you might have a list of codes already 
that you have predefined that you're trying to find in your work. All we do is we just right click in this section and we click on new code. So I might, might put here, um, history of, so I put here, for example, history of the podcast in my description. For example, here, anything related to how the podcast came about. Okay. It's added my code in there for me. But as you see here, currently nothing is in there. What we've got here, so Liz, you started the podcast in 2020. So that is history of podcasts. I'm just going to highlight that. I'm going to cross into here. Depending on your transcripts, you're going to be having lots of codes that you're going to generate here. Now remember, it's best to go really, really detailed with your um, with your codes because our next step, I'm going to show you how to then group those codes into a theme. Okay, so here I've gone ahead and I'm just not coded all of it, just coded a small section um, of this particular transcript. And you see we've got a couple of different types of codes in here. We've got things about the awards for example history of the podcast and how it all came about so if you're following for example Braun and clark's um 2013 six-step process what we would do at this stage is we would go through our entire code list and see if there's any duplicates or any ones that we can combine now you can do this in in-house in in vivo simply just by for example i wanted to combine in a history of podcast starting and history before the podcast because they're kind of the same we can click on this we can right click we can cut it and then here history before the podcast we can then right click in there and we can merge into selected code and we can copy all them across and now those ones that are in there so that's one way we can do that to group it some people may find it a little bit easier to export your code as a code book and then cut this out and do it manually depends how many you have. Okay, but now what we need to do is we've done that, we've gone through, we've grouped them, we've stuck out any duplicates that we might need or might have. Now we want to start generating our themes. So if you look at this here, there are certainly two themes that are emerging. There's things about the history of the podcast, which is coming up here. And it's also about the award itself. Now, for example, here there's um, obvious recognition. There's about the team not expecting to win the award um, and all those things. So we need to kind of group that. So what we typically would do is we want to create a heading for a theme. So we want to right click here, new code. We want to put theme. And the theme for this one is going to be history of the podcast and again that description we want to click aggregate coding from children that will become important later on and then we click okay so here we have the theme history of the podcast so now what we want to do is we want to start dragging some codes under that theme so here history before the podcast we just highlight that and we just drag that over into there and now you see that's now sitting under the history of the podcast day. So that's still sitting under that theme. So we click in there and we add it. We've got here COVID health. So for this theme, if I just double click on this to see the quote, so this is basically the catalyst for because of COVID, how the podcast had changed in relation to how it was today. So that code needs to fit under history of the podcast today and i don't want to combine it i want it as a separate one because that's an important point for my research so for this we want to right click on it and again we want to cut that you want to click here history of podcast today we want to right click right, right click and we want to click merge into new child node click okay Make sure we have aggregate from coding. So again, here. Again, add a description if you'd like to. Click OK. And now we have that there. 
So I'm going to go ahead now and do this for the award one. Now I've gone ahead and done that. Obviously, your particular transcript, you're probably going to have more than two themes, and within those themes, there'll be lots of information. But why is this useful? So, for example, if I was to write this up as part of the paper, one of my themes might be the history of the podcast. So if I click on this, and that gives me the history before uh, the podcast was created, the purpose of the podcast, uh, what was the goal of the podcast in relation to that, and again here, we have the history of the podcast today and why COVID was you know, kind of important in that journey. So it's our job now as a researcher to think, okay, what's the best way to present this? So maybe I want to talk to my reader about the history of the podcast before it became a thing, before COVID happened. So you can see here, I've got five mentions of that. So I can double click on this. And that's going to bring up all of those quotes that I had coded prior to this. So it's simply my job now to pick the best one or the best couple in order to make sense of that particular point that I want my reader to know. And then all we would do, we would just highlight the key part of the quote. We would um, have a control C or right click and we would copy that. And then we would paste that into our work and then we would write around that, bringing in some references, for example. So that's it. And Vivo is such a great, simple tool to retrieve that information from your transcripts in order to write them up. And it is as simple as that. I hope this has been helpful.